I'm Jasmine Moulton, and it's time for a reality check. Reality Check is a new show that will be dropping every Wednesday that will use facts and logic to debunk the favorite arguments of the left. So don't miss out. Tune in every week, every Wednesday on YouTube or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Don't miss a show. For our topic this week, we're going to be tackling one of the left's biggest obsessions, and that is the rich. Take a listen. The cost of everything is going up. Some say it's because of supply chain issues. Some say it's because the government spent money on programs to help people in need. Here's the truth. Why is the cost of everything going up? Simple answer, greed. When the cost of things go up, it hurts some people, but it benefits those at the very top. And it's not the grocery store workers, those that stock the shelves, farmers that grow your food, or small businesses and grocery stores like this. Large corporations, big box stores, and big retail are making record profits in this time. Why should you pay more and more just so that large corporations can make more and more profit? It's a rigged system. So here is the most important economic fact of our time. We are living in an age of surging income inequality, particularly between those at the very top and everyone else. This shift is the most striking in the US and in the UK, but it's a global phenomenon. It's happening in communist China, in formerly communist Russia. It's happening in India, in my own native Canada. We're even seeing it in cozy social democracies like Sweden, Finland, and Germany. From what we heard from those two clips, we can basically boil the left's arguments about the rich down to two main arguments. One, that the rich don't pay their fair share. And two, that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Now, the first thing to do when you hear these arguments is to ask for a definition. There's no single definition of what the rich means, and it really is this nebulous term, but it's worth nailing down what their definition is of the rich, because that could really impact what they think should be done about this problem. Now, usually what the left means when they're referring to the rich is the top 1%, but still that definition doesn't suffice because there are two different categories that mean two very different things. On the one hand, you could have the top 1% of income earners in Canada, and on the other, you have the top 1% of wealth in Canada. What you might be surprised to learn is that in order to qualify as a top 1% of income earners in Canada, you just need to earn over $250,000 a year. Now, this is according to Statistics Canada. Now, on the other hand, if they're not talking about income earning, if they're talking about top 1% of wealth, well, that's a different story. So according to a report from the parliamentary budget officer, in order to be in the top 1% of wealth in Canada, and this is family wealth, uh, the threshold to be in the top 1% is just over $6 million. I believe it's something like $6.1 million. So just to recap, first step, anytime you hear those arguments, always ask them to define what they mean by the rich because their definition will have big impacts on what they think should be done about the problem. So as I said, the left have two main arguments when it comes to the rich. A, that the rich don't pay their fair share, and B, that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Let's debunk argument number one, that the rich don't pay their fair share. The Fraser Institute released a report that said that the top 20% of income earners in Canada paid about two thirds of all income taxes in Canada. It was about 64%. That's a big chunk. The top 1% of income earners in Canada pay for 18% of all income taxes in Canada. So the very first question that you should ask a leftist if they say that the rich should pay their fair share is what would be fair if 1% of Canadians pays 18% of income taxes how much more should they pay? If 20% of the top income earners in Canada cover 64% of income taxes, how much more should they pay to make that fair? In fact, Dr. Mark Milkey published a report with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation that found that one third of tax filers in Canada, which is about 9 million people at the time of the report, they don't pay any income tax at all. So the entire income tax burden is borne by two thirds of tax filers in Canada. His report goes on to show that in jurisdictions in Canada where there are a number of high income individuals, they actually serve to alleviate the tax burden on middle income and lower income Canadians as well. So if anything, it really helps to have high income earning people in 
paying tax in the same jurisdiction as you because you'll end up paying less taxes. Your tax burden is relieved. It actually helps uh, middle income and lower income Canadians when we have higher income Canadians who can help to shoulder the burden. So it really isn't true if the left is pretending to care about lower income Canadians, they wouldn't really want to get rid of the higher income ones either. Now that's for the top 1% of income earners. But if we shift over to the top 1% of wealth, uh, family wealth in Canada, well, their solution is a bit different. Instead of increasing, as we know with income tax, it's a graduated tax system. People who earn more pay more. Now, whether that's a good idea might be a topic for another podcast, but when it comes to wealth, the left shifts their argument and they say that instead of a graduated system like we have on income, we should have a wealth tax that slaps in, comes into effect at a certain level of wealth. Now, a wealth tax is a terrible idea, which again, probably deserves its own entire show. It's that bad. But I think that we need to touch on it because it always comes up in this debate about the rich. The left is always saying that there should be a wealth tax. The evidence should be, speak for itself. There's been a ton of European countries that tried wealth taxes and abandoned them because they don't work and they're a lot of money to implement. But uh, in Canada, the parliamentary budget officer actually released a report saying that if we had a wealth tax, they're not really sure, but it might bring in $5.6 billion. I did a quick calculation and 5.6 billion, the revenue that a wealth tax would bring in, wouldn't even cover four days of Justin Trudeau spending. So you'd get to partway through Thursday before that revenue would run out. So just to recap, the rich do pay their fair share. They pay the vast majority of income taxes in Canada. They actually help to alleviate the tax burden on lower income Canadians and middle income Canadians. And a wealth tax uh, is very poorly understood by the left, but uh, it wouldn't do anything to alleviate the financial mess that Canada's in, um, but it would wreak havoc on, on industry and a variety of industries that would just wreak havoc generally in Canada. All right, and now to debunk the left's second typical argument when it comes to the rich, which is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. I am so excited to debunk this because it's such a ridiculous statement that can be proven wrong so easily, which I can't wait to do. But first, watch this clip. Let me give you a few numbers to place what's happening. In the 1970s, the 1% accounted for about 10% of the national income in the United States. Today, their share has more than doubled to above 20%. You may recognize uh, for our podcast listeners that voice. It was our, it is our finance minister and deputy prime minister, Christy Freeland. Now, this is from a TED talk that she had years ago, but why I wanted to include this clip is because it really underpins the philosophy of the current government in Canada of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the way that he's this government is really revolves around this idea that the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. This philosophy played a big role in why Christia Freeland holds the position that she has today. The book that she wrote, Plutocrats, outlines this philosophy and her TED talk does as well, which we just listened to. Now, the very first way to counter this argument that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer is very simple. It's that it's not an empirical argument. It's an emotional one. Empirical being something you can measure. We can clearly measure that the poor are not getting poorer globally and here at home in Canada. In fact, Dr. Steven Pinker is someone whose work on this I really admire. So he's a Harvard professor. He's out of Montreal, actually, a proud Canadian. And he said this, he dismisses the rich getting richer, poor getting poorer argument as a relativistic one, meaning you're just comparing things relatively. Is the gap widening? Well, is that really the relevant question? Because it would be far more relevant to focus on measures such as absolute prosperity. It doesn't matter necessarily where the poor are in relation to the rich, but more so how are the poor doing generally? Are they moving up the ladder? Are they getting a better quality of life, etc.? Just because there's inequality, that doesn't equal poverty. He calls that a logical fallacy. As I said, what we actually see around the globe and here at home in Canada is that the poor are getting richer. Let me read a quote to you from humanprogress.org. Globally, in the past 25 years, more than 1.25 billion people escaped extreme poverty. That equates to over 130,000 people being lifted out of poverty every single day. Now, this 
stat should make people happy. And if it doesn't, if it angers them because it debunks their argument that the poor are getting poorer, then that should tell you a lot about who you're talking to. But fortunately, I mean, that's something really incredible that people are being lifted out of poverty every single day at alarming rates and not just around the world, but also here in Canada. So according to the government's own data, which is published on its website, Poverty in Canada is at one of the lowest rates it's been in recent history, and it's a pretty sharp decline as well. Now, the left also, when they talk about the rich, like to talk about them like they're this exclusive, impenetrable group, that there's, you know, a, a group of maybe Toronto elitists or something like that, that we just, we can never aspire to join. It's impermeable. We just will never gain entry into that exclusive group. But Statistics Canada actually shows another story. So I took a look at some recent census data, and if you look at the top income earners in Canada, five years ago, only 50% of the current top income earners in Canada were in that group. So it really is quite fluid. I mean, there is room for social mobility in Canada. The Canadian dream is alive and well. It's just simply not true that there's this group of rich people in Canada that stay rich and the rest of us can't ever gain entry. But here's one of the biggest mistakes and flaws that the left has in their logic when it comes to the rich. The left talks about the pie as if when the rich gain their portion of the pie or economic growth, as the rich get richer, they think that necessarily it's a zero-sum game, which means that the poor have to get poorer. But what they don't understand is that in any sort of growing economy, while your portion might get smaller, your total wealth might actually be bigger. So you'd have a smaller piece of the pie, but you'd actually have more in your pocket at the end of the day. So your retort in this case really should be that the focus should be on growing the pie, not on redistributing it. Now, this actually brings me to one of my favorite examples examples, uh, it's a video clip that we'll play in just a moment that explains why the wealthy get a bad rap, but really they do play an important function in our society, in upward mobility within our society. Here's the clip. Why is it we have this lack of money where people who can't support themselves decently and get a decent job, where all these big men are up on top making oodles and oodles of money, they don't need it. They can only eat that much, eat you know, sleep in a bed. And what do you suppose bed. they do? If they don't eat it and don't, sleep, uh, don't use it, what do you suppose they, they do? They hoard it. They and what do you mean they hoard it? You mean it. they put it under their pillows? That's right. No. They, they keep investing it. Investing it in That's what? That's right. Yeah. What are they invested in? Well, in oil and everything where, I mean, all these other people. Who are what are they invested in? Don't get off the subject. No. What are they invested in? Well, they invested in a lot of uh, different things that the little people need. Well, do they invest it in factories? Yes. Does some of that money end up in machines? Yes. Do those factories and machines provide ordinary working people with jobs or not? What do you suppose the productivity of this country would be and of the, the wage rate would be if the total amount of capital in this country today was what it was 100 years ago? Where yeah. do you suppose the improvements in productivity come from except from the, re the investment by people of their savings? But let me go to your fundamental question. First place, Nirvana is not for this world. There is no paradise. Of course, we've got a lot of people who are poorly off. But if you look at it over time, if you get a sense of proportion, the well-being of a ordinary people has been the main thing that has been improved by economic progress and economic growth and development. That was famous economist Milton Friedman explaining the value of investments that help spur innovation and entrepreneurialism within our society. To conclude, when politicians in Canada, leftist politicians like to focus on and target the rich, it really is a distraction from their own atrocious financial track record. As I've already pointed out, revenue from a wealth tax would last the Trudeau government three and a half days. So that is not a serious solution to fix this country's financial problems. For those of you who are unaware, Justin Trudeau has doubled this country's debt since he came into office. Now, while Finance Minister Christia Freeland likes to blame COVID as an excuse, let's not forget, and we really should hold them to account here, that government added $100 billion to the country's debt before COVID-19. So recall they were in office five years before COVID-19 was even a word anyone had heard. And they added $100 billion to the debt. If you're $100 billion off the mark, you shouldn't be giving anybody financial advice. You should really be doing some introspective thinking about maybe how you could do better managing the economy.
Quite frankly, this government shouldn't be looking at the rich to solve its financial problems. They should be looking in a mirror. The most obvious retort when governments like or politicians like Jagmeet Singh, Justin Trudeau like to talk about how the rich get richer is that they're conveniently ignoring how their government enriches the already quite wealthy families in this country. My favorite example of this was when the Trudeau government gave $12 million to Loblaws to put in some sort of environmental, environmentally friendly freezer. So $12 million of tax taken from taxpayers' pockets given to a large company owned by one of the wealthiest families in Canada. I think that, so it's owned by the Weston family. I think that their total net worth is somewhere around the 10 billion mark. Uh, I think they're something like the fourth richest family in the country. It's insane to think that a government who pretends to defend the interests of the lower income and middle class would take money out of their pockets and hand it over to one of the wealthiest family companies in the country. If the left was really serious about helping lower income Canadians or even the middle class, they would acknowledge the fact that the best poverty reduction tool we've ever known in the history of mankind is the market economy. So to recap, here's a reality check for leftists complaining about the rich. The rich do pay their fair share. They pay most of the income taxes in Canada. To a rising tide floats all boats. As the rich get richer, investment and absolute prosperity increases across the board. Getting rid of the rich in Canada would hurt entrepreneurialism and innovation, which are two things that this country desperately need right now. Lastly, the real solution here is smarter, smaller, and more accountable government. That's our show for this week. Thank you for tuning in to Reality Check with Jasmine Moulton. Don't forget to follow us wherever you get your podcasts, like, subscribe on YouTube, and remember that we're releasing a new show every Wednesday. See you next week.